Hi, welcome to Lutz's video series. Today we're going to be talking about how to select cable size based on the motor that you'll be running in your application. Thankfully there is a helpful guide to help us through this process, the National Electric Code, and today we're going to be using the 2017 edition. Now be aware that your state may be operating on a different edition of the NEC, and as with all things code related, the final say rests with the AHJ or authority having jurisdiction for your particular area. So make sure to consult that authority before making any engineering decisions. As you can see in front of me, motor cables come in all different sizes. And what we need to do is figure out, based on our motor, what size cable is needed per the regulations in the electrical code. Before we get started, there are two pieces of information that we have to have, and these are found on the motor nameplate. These are the motor horsepower and the voltage and type of motor that you're using. Uh, for today's example, we're going to be using the most common motor that Lutza comes across, which is a three-phase AC motor running at 460 volts. There is a wealth of information found in Chapter 430 of the NEC um, that tells you all about the overcurrent protection, conductor sizing, and installation methods needed when installing a motor in an industrial setting. And there is a very helpful chart in the back that if we have those two pieces of information, motor horsepower and voltage, uh, we can actually determine the ampacity of the cable that's required to supply power to the motor. So if we take the example of a 25 horsepower motor operating at 460 volts, uh, we can use a table in the back of the NEC to determine that we must have um, a cable ampacity based on the full load amps of the motor. And those full load amps for that particular application is 34 amps. So a 24 horsepower motor, 460 volts, has what's called a full load current or full load ampacity, FLA, of 34 amps. Now, that's not to be confused with the FLA that's found on the nameplate of the motor. That is a piece of uh, data or information that's specific to that motor. However, the NEC specifies that when we determine cable impacity, we have to use the chart in section 430. Now that we know the full load current of the motor, we go to section 430.22. In the 2017 edition of the code, that tells us that the minimum cable ampacity for motor supply cable has to be at least 125% of the full load current we just determined. So what we do is take our 34 amps, multiply by a factor of 1.25, which gives us, in our example, 42.5 amps. So that is our minimum cable ampacity, 42.5 amps. Now we look at section 310 in the code. And section 310 deals specifically with conductors. Uh, one section of that particular part of the code talks about conductor impacity. And there are three factors when we look at the impacity of a cable. Number one is the gauge size of the conductor. Number two is correction factors based on the ambient temperature of the installation. And number three are adjustment factors based on the number of current carrying conductors inside each cable. When I am working on a motor application, I like to work backwards because we know our minimum ampacity that's required for this cable, 42 and a half amps, and so we can apply our correction and adjustment factors backwards to determine our required cable ampacity. So let's start with adjustment factors. This applies to any cable with more than three current carrying conductors. Now most motor supply cables have three phase conductors and a ground. And for the purposes of adjustment, the ground is not considered a current carrying conductor. Unless something goes wrong, the ground should never see current. Uh, however, we do have cables like this one in front of me that have a control pair inside the cable. So we have three phase conductors and we have two control conductors. And those are considered current carrying conductors for the purposes of this calculation. Um, so let's assume we have a cable like this and we have five current carrying conductors. If we look at the table below, in the NEC, you'll see that we have a derating factor for four to six conductors in the same cable, and that's an 80% derating factor. So what we would do is take our ampacity of 42.5 amps and divide by 0.8 to reach our new higher minimum ampacity based on that derating. Um, the next step that we take is to look at correction factors, and correction factors talk about the ambient temperature of the installation. So if this motor is going to be installed in proximity to an oven or a kiln and the ambient temperature is high, we need a higher ampacity cable to overcome that ambient temperature. That's basically what this factor is adjusting for. And these are called correction factors. They're found in the chart that you'll see at the bottom of your screen here. Um, so if we have an installation that is other than 30 degrees C, 
I think technically it's between 26 and 30 degrees C, uh, we have to apply these correction factors. And that can influence the opacity of your cable selection as well. So if your installation is in an ambient temperature other than between 26 and 30 degrees C, a correction factor would have to be applied per the table below. Now the final step in our selection process, which points us to the proper size cable that we need, is found in the table at the bottom of your screen. This table tells you the rated ampacity of a cable per the gauge size. And what we want to do here is take our final minimum ampacity value, remember that's based on FLA times 1.25, times your adjustment factor, times your correction factor. Uh, and what that's going to do is give us our minimum required cable impacity. Now we have to select the proper column to use in our chart, and that's based on your conductor and the entire rating of your circuit. So circuits can be rated at 60, 75, or 90 C per the NEC. For all of our dry flex cables, our cables are rated at 90 C. Now just because the cable's rated 90 C doesn't mean the entire circuit is. So make sure to take into account the terminal temperature ratings of all the equipment you'll be connecting to. Uh, but assuming that our entire circuit is rated 90 C, we can use the 90 C column in this chart, and we want to go down the column and find the highest ampacity just over our minimum required ampacity. Then we can follow the chart to the left, and that's going to show us the minimum gauge size that we need for our cable. Based on that, you can select your cable. Uh, we have a very helpful horsepower selection chart in the back of our catalog. So if you have a Lutza catalog handy, you can actually go to our technical resources section, and we have horsepower selection charts by 90 and 75 degree C circuits. So if you know the horsepower of your motor, that chart will point you right to the proper cable to use to connect it. In addition, we have a very helpful configurator on driveflex.com that's going to do the same thing in a digital format. And it will tell you exactly what assumptions we make under the NEC so that when you do show it to your code authority, uh, they're satisfied that you've followed the procedures that we've talked about today and are compliant to your local code regulations. Thank you again for taking the time to watch our video today. If you have any questions about this topic, please feel free to contact us at info at lutza.com. You can visit us at lutza.com or driveflex.com, or you can contact your local Lutza representative. Thank you, and have a great day.